Hi you one, welcome to Writing This Morning with Mrs. Topman. This term in English and in writing, we are learning to write a text type called persuasive writing. Persuasive writing is a piece of writing where you are trying to persuade your reader to agree with your opinion. So maybe you're writing on the topic of dogs are better than cats and you really want to convince your audience, your reader, that dogs are better than cats and here are all my reasons why. <laughs> there are lots of different topics that you could be writing about trying to convince someone to agree with your opinion. To start off this unit, the first thing we need to make sure that we can do is we need to know the difference between an opinion and a fact. I wonder if you were able to do a think pair share with a buddy right now, as if we were in our classroom, would you be able to tell them the difference between an opinion and a fact? Have a little thinking moment to yourself. What's an opinion? Let's start with the definition of an opinion. Remember the word definition means what that word means. So in the dictionary, I can look up lots of definitions, lots of meanings for different words. All right, the difference between an opinion and a fact is an opinion is something that you believe but it could be very different to what the person next to you believes, what the person down the road believes, what Mrs. Chapman believes or what your mum and dad believes. Everyone can have a different opinion and that's okay. Maybe the opinion that you hold is that chocolate cake is better than vanilla cake. Is that a fact? No, it's just an opinion. You believe it, but someone else might think something differently and that's okay. A fact, on the other hand, is something that is true, there's evidence to prove it, and it can't be changed. It's a fact, it's a piece of information. The sun is hot. Can anybody try to convince me that the sun is actually cold? If I touch it, it will be cold. No, the sun is hot, that sentence is a fact, because it is true, and there is evidence to prove it, Everybody knows the sun is hot, that's a fact. But if I were to say, hmm, pink is the best color, that's just an opinion because that's just what Mrs. Topman thinks because she's wearing pink today. But maybe Will thinks, no, blue is the best color. Maybe Quinn thinks, no, yellow is the best color. Maybe Mom thinks, no, rainbow is the best color and here are my reasons why. Well this term in our persuasive writing we are going to be arguing for our opinion, trying to convince the other person to agree with our opinion and giving them some reasons why they should think the same way we do. All right to get started we're going to play a little game called fact versus opinion. I'd like you in front of your screen to put your hands on your head if you think the sentence I'm about to say is a fact Put your hands like twinkly stars if you think the sentence I say is opinion. Everybody can have a different opinion, remember. So you're going to vote fact or opinion. And then I'll tell you which one is correct. You can keep score maybe of how many you get correct and go and tell mum when you finish the video or dad. All right. Fact or opinion you one. One red is a better class than one green. Fact or opinion? It's an opinion. <laughs> it's Mrs. Dubbin's opinion, of course, because she loves her class. <laughs> but it might be probably different to Mr. Jones's opinion. He might have a different opinion. He might think, no, one green's better. So it's an opinion, it can change. Next sentence, Mrs. Topman has long brown hair. Fact or opinion? I want to see all your hands up, voting one or the other. Good, that's a fact, because yes, here's the evidence. You can see it, Mrs. Topman does have long brown hair. If someone was to tell you no, Mrs. Topman has short, frizzy red hair, you'd say, uh-uh, 
you can't have that opinion because it's a fact that she has long brown hair. All right, two more. Wollongong, that's the place we live, that's the name of our city, is the best city in the entire world. Fact or opinion? Good, it's an opinion because if you lived in New York City, you might not agree with that opinion. You might say, no, New York is the best city in the world. You might have a different opinion and that's okay. Last one. Alfie, that's Mrs. Tottman's dog, is the cutest dog in the entire planet. Fact or opinion? I bet if you have a dog that you think is very cute, you are very quick to vote opinion because you're like, no, my dog is cuter. <laughs> and that's okay, we can all have different opinions. All right, today you are going to be doing some writing on an opinion and I want you in your writing to try and prove whoever comes along and reads your writing to agree with your opinion. The topic that we are writing on is, is it better to live in the country slash bush? So like out where there's not many people, not many schools, not many parks, but there's lots of nature, maybe a lake that you can ride your boat on, maybe places you can go motorcycle riding, maybe lots of places you can go for hikes. So out where there's less people, more nature. Or is it better to live in a city? And you get to choose here one. What do you think? Is it better to live out where there's lots of nature? Or is it better to live in the city where there's lots of things to do and lots of people? All right, when this video is over, you're going to go and get your holiday learning book and you're going to write this out as your topic at the top and give it a nice big underline so that I know that that is the heading and you're about to argue and give me three reasons to prove your opinion. Is it better to live in the country or the city? Put your hand on your head if you think it's better to live where there's lots of nature, in the country or the bush. Put your hand like twinkly stars if you think it's better to live in the city where there's lots of people, friends, schools, parks, but maybe there's lots of traffic, lots of pollution, very busy. There are what we call pros and cons to both you one. That means there's good things and there's bad things about both living in the city and the country. But I want you to choose one of those opinions, stick to it, so don't change and go back and forth between, stick to either the city is the best or the country is the best, and write in your writing book three reasons why you think it's the best. So I'll show you what that will look like. Mrs. Topman's gonna to argue it's better to live out where there's lots of nature in the country. So one, you're going to write in full sentences, so that means do not, start your sentence with because. If you're starting your sentence with because, it is not a full sentence because because only ever goes in the middle of a sentence. So you need to make sure you've got the words that come before because, which will be your opinion. It is better to live in the bush because there is lots of nature and nature is very calming. I like to be calm. All right, so that's my reason number one. How many reasons are you going to write for me? Three, good listening. And I'm going to leave a paragraph space and I'm going to give my second reason. And you're going to do this too, write two dot in your book. Don't just copy my reasons though, you need to come up with three of your own reasons to prove your point. Two. It is better to live in the bush. See, I'm not changing between city and bush. I've made my decision and I'm sticking to it for all three dot points. It is better to live in the bush because there is lots of space to play and it isn't crowded. You know how sometimes the city can feel a little bit congested Crowded, lots of traffic, lots of cars, lots of honking. Whereas out in the bush, you could climb a tree, you could play in the paddocks, you could ride your motorbike, lots of, lots of wide open spaces. Three, my last reason 
It is better to live in the bush. See how I'm starting with them all the same way? That's because I'm starting with full sentences. I'd like you to do the same. Because, the word because always goes in the middle of the sentence, never at the start, never at the end. What's my third reason going to be? It is less polluted. It is better to live in the bush because it is less polluted. Pollution is bad for our planet and there is lots of pollution in big cities. Cars make pollution, factories make pollution and people can make pollution when they live there. All right, I've given three reasons why it's better to live in the bush. You might choose to give me three reasons why it's better to live in the city, but that decision's up to you. All right, that's your task. Go grab your writing book, write out your heading. Is it better to live in the country or the city? And write down three reasons why. When you're done, take a photo, post it to Seesaw so I can have a read and maybe give you a sticker on your Seesaw work. All right, have a good day, you one.